Mobile internet in your van is something many of us need or want, and with so many different ways of getting it, it's hard to pick what you need. It's not helped that what you need will be different to what others need, depending on what you want to use it for, where you're planning to travel, how important it is to you, and how much you want to spend. Well, in this video, I'm going to share 10 things I think it's important to know about to help you pick the right mobile internet solution for you. So keep watching. Hotspotting from your phone definitely has its advantages. You're using the phone and data plan you already have, and the modems in modern smartphones are generally very capable in a good signal area. But there are also some problems. As smartphones are small, so are the antennas. So as you get away from a strong signal, the performance can drop quite quickly. And unlike most mobile routers, they don't have external antenna connections. If you travel with others, it ties your phone to the van if others want to use the internet. Phones are also often limited to how many devices can be connected. If you're constantly charging your phone to keep a hotspot running, it can be detrimental to the phone's battery. And having a device designed and dedicated to providing your mobile internet gives you the option of better performance, flexibility, and the chance to keep your van connected for things like alarms and CCTV. Most of us will have experienced the drop in signal when inside a van, so having the options to position your antenna outside avoids that loss. External antennas are also able to be bigger and more efficient than those built into devices, so will improve performance in areas where devices without them will struggle or not get a signal at all. There are two key types, omnidirectional, which are fit and forget as they perform as well in all directions, or directional, which generally perform better than omnidirectional, but they have to be pointed in the direction of the tower you want to use, which in a vehicle often isn't ideal. When they have them, routers and MiFi come with two main types of external antenna connections, TS9 and SMA. So what's the difference, and which is best? Well, TS9 are push fit, they're quite fragile, are used mainly on smaller portable battery powered MiFi's, SMA's are larger, robust, have a more positive lock, and are generally on household and professional routers. For us, SMA is the better choice. In a vehicle, TS9 can vibrate you loose. We've seen multiple TS9 connections easily damaged when plugged in and unplugged, and with almost all good quality antennas coming with SMA connectors. To connect those to a unit with a TS9 connector, you need to use an adapter, which is not only an extra connection to fail, but can also introduce signal loss, reducing the benefit of the antenna. If you've already looked at routers, you've probably seen a couple of different types. Those designed primarily for use in the home, and those specifically designed for use on the move. Home routers are worth considering, but it's also worth remembering that they're designed for use in one location, so their software is not expecting to be changing towers and vans as you travel, and they're not designed for the harsh life on the road that they can be put through when in a van. Professional mobile routers from the likes of Teltonica are specifically designed to be robust, being the choice of not only most to home manufacturers, but also the emergency services, race cars, public transport, ships and even helicopters. Before we get on to point number five, this video is brought to you thanks to our friends at Solwise, who are a UK business that bring the best professional products for mobile internet together in one place. Their technical expertise and support of the products they sell, in our opinion, is second to none, and we've been very lucky to try out a number of products from the likes of Teltonica, Pointing and Q Wireless. You can see reviews of these in our videos. We also love that Solwise very kindly give our viewers 10% discount off their already competitive product range, simply by entering Explore Van at the checkout. So if you're looking for a high quality, professional, yet affordable mobile internet solution actually designed for the harsh life on the road, please check out solwise.co.uk. For portable, home and professional mobile internet routers, you'll probably have seen LTE Cat4, Cat6, Cat12 and even Cat22 and various in between. But what does it mean? 
Well, in general, the higher the category, the more bands the router's LTE modem can aggregate together to improve the performance in areas where signal is good and more than one band is available. Then the higher category routers will perform better. But it's worth noting in areas where there is only one band available, a Cat 4 router is likely to perform just as well as a Cat 22. In this example we've used the maximum theoretical speeds, but we all know it's highly unlikely we'll get this. But band locking can help to get us the best speed possible. More advanced routers give you the option to lock the band. How can this give you better performance? Well, when the router is connecting automatically, it will often just pick the strongest band. However, these bands may not have the best bandwidth. By being able to select the band you want, you can make sure you are using the best ones. In this scenario, I've just used example speeds to give you an idea of the improvements you could get. You can check out real life examples of band locking in some of our other videos. This is generally only available on professional mobile routers, but it gives you the chance to have two different network SIMs in the unit at the same time. In dual SIM models, it can be set to switch the modem between the SIMs automatically when the performance drops on one. In dual modem models, they have two modems, so it can switch like a dual SIM model, but also simultaneously connect to two different networks combining the connection speed. Again, more advanced routers allow you to tailor the performance to suit your needs, for example by prioritising bandwidth to certain devices. This can be really useful if you have a number of different people using your connection, like a family, and you want to prioritise your important work Zoom meeting over someone catching up on Love Island. When it comes to professional mobile routers, you tend to get even more configurable elements like remote inputs and outputs that you can use to control things remotely or get alerts from your van and the ability to manage the device remotely either over the internet or using text messages and even the chance to use the router as a GPS tracking device. Finally, let's take a look at 4G or 5G. Well, 5G is the pinnacle of cellular mobile internet. It can give great speeds when a 5G signal is available, but coverage is generally limited to cities and bigger towns currently. 5G routers are backwards compatible and perform really well on 4G signals too, but they are more expensive to buy. Most data plans do come with both 4G and 5G available, so to make use of the 5G signal when it's available is nice. But if you spend little time in cities and towns, then the extra cost of a 5G router might be unnecessary. In this example, we're looking at coverage for the 3 network. So hopefully understanding just those 10 things will help you to make a more informed decision of what you need for your van. But if you want to delve a bit deeper, you can check out my hour long seminar from the Adventure Overland show, where I talk through more of the technical details and the various options you can choose. It's linked up here and in the video notes. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.